All right. Okay. Yes. Did it look reasonable? Um, no. I got to do some comparison. But okay. Mm -hmm. yep. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're a couple minutes early, but since we're all here, mm -hmm. why don't we get started since we're on? So we'll open the March 20th meeting with the pledge. <laughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty then. We will uh, take a motion on uh, manifests. I'll make a motion to approve the accounts payable manifest of March 6th and March 20th, 2023 and the payroll manifests of March 7th and March 21st, 2023. Second. Motion made by Tony Doom is seconded by Ben Bartlett for the purposes of the um, secretary roll call state your name. Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Donna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas. And I'll make a motion to approve the public minutes of February 27th, 2023 um, as Written. Did we have any corrections to it? Um, Kelly had some minor corrections in here. Uh, like that, uh, punctuation and stuff? I, exactly. Or, yeah, nothing exactly. substantive. No, right. so I think we should accept uh, as revised. Yeah. As, oh, as, as revised. Yeah. 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 Second. Was that a motion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> motion made by Tony Dumas, seconded by Ben Bartlett. Hi, Roll Ben call. Bartlett. Hi, John Warren. Hi, Donna Danis. Hi, Tony Dumas. And I'll also make a motion to approve the non-public minutes from February 27th, 2023. I'll second that. Motion made by Tony Dumas, seconded by John Morin. Roll call vote. Hi, Ben Bartlett. Hi, John Morin. Hi, Donna Danis. Hi, Tony Dumas. All right. Do we have any committee reports? Uh, well, yeah, we did. We actually had a nice planning board meeting the other night. Tell us about it. And I was actually a little, um, a little disturbed by what happened, but it went through anyway, so it wasn't my nothing to do. We had a nice couple that came in from town. Um, they took over, uh, what's her name's place? Psalm 156 here. Uh, the town we bought it with conservation money, and they're doing a farm and stuff on it, and they, they have dinners they host there. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was really nice and stuff like this. But instead of doing the due diligence, this is my opinion. This isn't nothing against, I'm just saying, to watch over the many years of planning board experience that I have, to watch something like this get passed and get through so quickly. Like, we, it was like a one hour discussion, not even a one hour discussion. Nothing about fire, nothing about septics, nothing about nothing. For them to host up to 20 parties, of 40 something people which they've already been doing no but the only they didn't they had a um, special event a special event ah, thing okay. from us okay which limited them okay. now they can do up to 20 which is and there was no no questions about what the highway had to say or about you know access to 156 being a state road or for these events with this many cars no emergency access for the fact of if there was a fire how do you get all these cars and these people out? Because actually with the, with the rule is now they could have up to 99. They said they can't because they can't actually host that many at the time. But there's no, if they want to have a party for 99, because they're using the same rules that was under the, um, no, it just was there, so is there adequate parking? I, we don't know. We never saw anything. What? Nothing. Hmm. Nothing. But the planning board just went ahead and passed it. Pushed it right through. Interesting. You know, because it was conservation land. There was a couple things on there which gave them a lot of free access, which gave them a lot of leeway to what they can do. Yeah. But you thought if you were going to have something that was going to be hosted as a money-making fund, I mean, they do make money for these things. It's yep. not free to go to these dinners. Right. And the fact that we don't know the Capert House has been around for 50 years or whatever they lived there. We don't know a single thing about their septic system to hold these many people. They, you know, nothing brought up about bringing, to, briefly brought up about bringing party parties in, but they said it's expensive. So, you know, there's a lot of, a real lot of stuff. If you watch the minutes and go look, from what we do, from what that board does, and I'll say I'm part of the board, so I'm not gonna say 
in general, how we vet most people that come in for whatever they're doing, it's usually two or three meetings and it's usually intensive questions and nothing, nothing. It was shocked the shit out of me. Sorry to say that, but that just, it was uncandy how quickly uh, some of the members on that board were just threw it through. And I was very, because um, there was nothing even asked about the police department for what they did with the 40, 50 people. There's nothing asked about the fire department's opinion. None. Interesting. They just went on the fact that they had that special exception while well, they had permission then. So, but up to 20. And, and, you know, they said they're summertime events, but that could be 20 events in three months, four months. That's a lot. That's not one a month. And they just pushed it through. So very, um, and I told Ed that I was bringing it up at the meeting. So I'm, and this is all pot. I mean, I, <clears throat> he knew I was bringing this up to you. I mean, again, it was something that was very, and again, eight years. I mean, I've seen, and for what we did for the people that wanted that water cross, what they did for those three right there, the, the, what the board put those people through to hold that event, yep. just three, yep. on a huge parcel of land that's, I mean, just, yeah. And with, yep. you know, for what they did to make that right there and all the legal stuff they went through and everything, and for this, nothing, not even a question. And you can watch the minutes and make your own judgment, but I'm telling you, it was, and when I spoke up about it, uh, another member had to speak, well, that was another thing, but that doesn't matter. But it was, um, I was looked at as, why am I asking so many questions? And I'm usually the one that's gonna say, sure, go ahead, do it, you know? <laughs> so I was like on a total roll reverse, which was very, un yeah, so I don't know what we can go or where we're gonna go with that, but. I mean, it's if, pretty much a done deal now. If the it pretty much is, but it's just something that the, um, I was really uh, taken back by how people on that board, when it's something they want, they will easily push it through, but when it's something that's you know, it might not be towards their favor of whatever, you know, how much they'll make somebody have a hard time um, and, you know, push their values on it. So, okay. but every board's like that in yep. some sort of way. So, sure. but again, something if you want to look up, uh, hopefully we'll have no issues in the future with this events and everything goes perfectly smooth. The couple was really nice people and I really like what they're doing, the whole concept. It was more on um, the disapproval of what the planning board it was my for my opinion okay and that's the only board report i have <laughs> we had a couple other cases but they weren't nearly as exciting to me so. okay no 300 <laughs> no cip no budget um marston there is work underway now to um get dugouts built and what i'm sorry dugouts okay and um they are actively uh, going uh, after Lowell's to provide the lumber. So that's the only major thing that's going on out there. Where, right where are we at with the uh, testing and all that stuff for the public water source? Oh, John, do you know? Yeah, uh, basically we're on hold. We gave it to Gary at the irrigation company to follow through. He has not got back. I would say this week we're going to start talking to the two engineers at Jones and Beach who did work and see if we can get one of them to volunteer to do the engineering piece and see if they can then get it submitted. There is a, uh, there are some questions that Dale cannot answer on the form and we need an engineering to, an engineer to supply and we're kind of on hold for that. Do we know, know the time frame as to when we can expect uh, anything? Uh, I've, it depends upon uh, we're trying to get a volunteer. We may have to pay somebody. If we pay somebody, we'll probably get it quicker. Okay. So, right okay. now we're trying to work with volunteers. What would it cost if we had somebody else do it? Uh, I would think a thousand dollars would put a pretty good dent into it. So it's not, it's not cheap. But on the other hand, uh, I couldn't guarantee that's the number. Uh, but there is some research that needs to be done measurements in terms of the uh, uh, there's a protection zone that needs to be around the wellhead I think the biggest issue is going to be is the chemical treatment and pesticide going on the field 
going to adversely affect getting the well permitted as a drinking supply. The wellhead's enclosed, though, right? It's in the wellhead, uh, the d driller said it went down 180 feet, give or take 20, um, to bedrock. Yeah. So it's a very deep sand. So that um, helps to reduce the um, uh, risk of contamination from surface. However, with those fields right there, and you're going to be fertilizing them, you're going to be putting pesticides on them. They're within, well, I'd say, 50 feet of the well, you know, and y usually they want a 200 foot radius around the public water supply. So the question's going to become, and that's why we want an engineer to yeah. talk yeah. demand, draw, and to, to answer that question. The well driller has connections to the water board at the state level who approves these and he thinks it can be done but it's just a matter of getting all the uh, facts and numbers calculated and put together right. if i don't get a volunteer this week we'll go ahead and ellen can pay somebody <laughs> spend the money already <laughs> <coughs> okay, town administrator's report. Uh, actually, let me back up. I should have said this at first. <laughs> Welcome to Ellen White. Really happy to have you here as our new town administrator. Um, John has served us quite well over the past several months, but we're also thrilled to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> Might have to lean in because I don't think anybody can see you on TV. <laughs> I'll get my showcase next week. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, town administrator's report. Yeah, I, if you don't mind, I'll do it this week so Ellen sees how I've yeah, done it, absolutely. and then it'll yep. be up to her how she decides to yep. do it going absolutely. forward from there. First item, will the board approve moving the town meeting from the school to the town hall? You don't have much choice. The school doesn't want it because school's in session. Yep. Need a motion. Make a motion that the select board approve moving the town meeting to town hall uh, on, uh, on March 28th. Second. Motion made by Tony Dumas, second by Ben Bartlett. Roll call vote. Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Donna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas. We have a problem in the gym with lighting. Some of the lights are out. They're very high. To replace them, we want to replace them with LEDs, and we're going to have to rent a um, scissors lift to go in there. Uh, the lift is $100 each way for transportation and 240 a day. <clears throat> the total cost is going to be between 800 and 2500 Do you want to proceed with uh, fixing the lighting in the gym? So remind me, what, what is the issue with the lighting? Uh, some of them are out. They're not, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're not working. Okay. And you, you were planning on some ceiling tile replacement too, right? So the uh, stained and broken ones? Uh, we had not, and we, that was not part of the quote. Oh. We could <clears throat> try to build that into it once we get the scissors lift if you, I don't know how hard it is to replace I, those tiles. I just assume if you, if you have to rent a piece of equipment, you do it all at once. So if we got to replace the ceiling tiles, we do it at the same time. Okay, so uh, let me uh, research that and come back to you then. Okay. Or Ellen, come back to you. No point in doing it twice. Well, I assume the two that are out at the far end for the um, repelling rope or whatever you want to call it, that we're just going to put ceiling tiles in there and close that back in, mm -hmm. that we're not going to use those again. Is that right. correct, correct assumption? Okay. They're easy to put in and take out. You just tip them up and, you know, tilt them at an angle and drop them, drop them in. It's, it's easy. It's just the time. And yeah. driving the scissor jack around to... To yeah. get to each one. Well, so. Yeah, the scissors jack is 240 a day, um, so we may just want to plan to have it two days. The electrician uses it one, and then we have somebody use it to replace the tile. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll work on that. Um, the um, next board meeting, it's scheduled for the 27th, which is the night before the ballot vote. Do you want to have it on the 27th? Do you want to wait until you go to the 29th so you've got the results of town meeting 3031? Um, the one after that would be April 10th, but you could meet on April 3rd. So 
if you meet the week of the 27th, later that week, it would be this current board. If you meet April 3rd, the following week, it would be the new board. Can you explain why? Um, the law is that no person shall, and I'm quoting from RSA 66910, no person shall assume a town office until after the time period for requesting a recount is over, and 66930, any person for whom a vote was cast and recorded for any office at a town election may no later than the Friday following the election apply in writing for a recount. It's not how close it is, it's anyone who gets a vote could request a recount. So the recount period goes until Friday of next week. So until Friday of next week, all of you would continue to sit. The following week, if you go to April 3rd, it would be the new board. So do you want to meet? So just to, just to yep. point out, okay. this isn't how we've done it in the past. Right. This is the way we should have and should moving forward, but I just want to flag that that, that is different. So the, the question I have, do you, you want a meeting Sorry, next week? What do you mean it's not how we've done it in the past? In the past, the town clerk has sworn in people who were, were recently elected right away. Hmm. Did we do that? Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, but last year. John has clarified for us that within the law we should be doing it after the recount. In practice, if it's a big vote difference, it's not going to change Correct. and there won't be a recount, yeah. but the law is there yeah. so that in Fine. some states you have to be within a half a percent or a percent. want to come to another meeting or not? Well, what's on the agenda <laughs> for that? Like what would be, what would be the topics of discussion? Okay, so um, uh, the, the, the topics of discussion, if it was after the deliberative session, would be the 350 truck yeah. in terms of whether you want to order it. You could have recreation come in on the move of office space since you've, you're familiar with all of the discussion as opposed to waiting until a new board. And there might be something that comes up as a result of the voting that this board wants to take action in because you're familiar with the budget in terms of starting the default budget calculation uh, process and everything else. So what I'm saying is there may be some things that you want to clean up as a board after the ballot vote. But the ballot vote's on the 28th. Yeah. Right, so you can go the 29th or 30th. If you go the 27th, you're not cleaning up anything. You can't vote on the truck yet. You can't. I know, that's why I didn't. So the Does question is, <clears throat> you guys will be sitting on the board. Is there value in having a meeting on the 29th and having Tony and I there to help wrap things up, or are you confident with whoever the, the new board members are that you'll be able to get them up to speed and move forward with them? Okay. In my opinion, I'd rather wrap things up and then the new board will start fresh going forward. These are little odds and ends that I think that we can clean up before the new board starts. I was thinking the exact opposite. I know, I could see it in your face. <laughs> it is a surprise. <laughs> well, throw the new guys right in with the fire and say, hey, here you go. There'll be plenty of fire for them to be walking through, so, you know. We could meet April 3rd, and that would still be us, right? No, April 3rd would be the new board. April 3rd, because the... Because you're past Friday of the recount. The recount period would be the... Uh, oh, okay, The gotcha. Friday after, gotcha. the, after the 28th, which must be April 1. April 1st is a Saturday, but yeah, Friday uh, the, the Friday 31st. Friday the 31st yeah. then would be your, yeah. your, your end of the recount, but it's basically the end of the day, so you can't do, it, it's, can't do much. You can't do the re. Yeah. They, until Saturday, until April comes, it would be this board, basically. I'm fine either way, whatever you guys want. Tony? I'll be in Boston on Wednesday and Thursday after the election so I'll be getting back in town late and the big item of the truck is I would like to see the new board vote on that there you have it so so then I, I mean if you're okay I mean do you want more discussion on that well it's not just the truck I mean 
Well, but if you're going to be missing uh, Tony, you're already we're already down anyway. Yeah, so. you're already down. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so then the question becomes: Right now on the calendar, it's April 10th. I assume you want to move it to April 3rd so you get to it more quickly. Well, is that we switched those weeks on you? Is going back to this week? You know, having a like, this week works as you can see. Um, you know. Well, yeah. right. I'm saying so. Like next so, week, next Monday wouldn't work, but the week after, we stick on yes. the Mondays yes. that we're working now. For the so April 3rd would work for you. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Otherwise, I'll be running. However, I got, I got the, only thing, <clears throat> the only thing I'll say about that is that Kelly had laid out the calendar, trying to have the least impact of the schedule uh, on the schedule because of holidays. Yes. So that's what, the 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 difficulty we're going to have is Ben's schedule is every other week. The problem you have is every third month you have five Mondays and it throws your schedule off for the next three months. Right. Mm. That's, that's why if you want to say first and third, or you want to say as it has in the past, second and fourth, you can, third. but it's going to mess okay. Ben yeah, up. The other sure. option is you could start later. Well, we can let the next board decide that, right? It's fine with me. The new board will decide everything except the first meeting. Do you want to do the third? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, so we'll post for 4-3. And I'll let Lori and Don know, you know, what the RSAs are in case they question okay. uh, why they're waiting until the third. And actually, if there's a recount, one of you will continue to be on the board until the recount is completed. Okay. Mm. For whichever seat it is that's because there's two seats, so for whichever seat is being contested. Well, you'll have to decide which of the two you consider has been. I was going to say, how do you tell? You, yeah. It's just oh, the, fair, fair, fair. the okay. top two winners. Right. All right, well, let's worry about that when that happens. We know <laughs> now. It's yeah. unlikely, but if there is a recount on the 4th, on the 3rd of April, the two of you will be back. Okay, we'll deal with that when it comes. Assuming the recount hasn't been completed. Yep. Next item, trail donations. The Conservation Commission's received $100 under the powers of the Conservation RSA 36A colon 4. Said commission may receive gifts of money and other things by gift subject to the approval of the local body. So are you willing to uh, accept this donation? And I would make it a blanket acceptance of other donations towards the Conservation Commission trail fund. How many are there in total? Right now, there's only one. Oh. Just to cover us in but case anything if, comes up again. If another, if somebody put uh. another fifty dollars in, are, gotcha. you, are you authorizing donations to? The, you could put a cap up to a thousand dollars, and then you'd have to revisit no, it or know, something. I, I kind of like knowing when people donate to it. Okay, so you want to do it every time? It's only two seconds out of our meeting. It's okay. Not like it's gonna kill us. Yeah. No. So make oh, a motion for a hundred. Make a motion to accept the donation of $100. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the donation of $100 for the Conservation Commission for the trails. Second. Motion made by John Moore and second by Tony Dumas. Roll call vote. Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, John Moore. Aye, Donna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas. Okay, the town seal. Um, there has been an issue with the town seal using oh, by no. non-town organization. This postcard, for example, went out by a political organization with the town seal. We got the bill for the post guide, incidentally, because they saw the town seal, so the company who did this sent us the bill, even though it was a political organization that was doing it. I would How like to resolve that. We sent the bill to somebody else. We didn't pay it. We told, the, we told the, um, the ones who did this card that it wasn't us. They needed to find the organization that's listed here in the return address. Um, so what I would... Uh, like the town to do is to vote to restrict the use of the seal to um, town government including boards departments committees and commissions and forbid the use by those that are not a part of municipal government so we talked about it using our town seal like when they were doing the beer we gave them permission to use the seal to put on the beer right I didn't think already that you, you if you wanted to use the seal you had to ask us well that's what I want to make yeah I want to vote to make it clear that nobody can use the seal without a vote vote by the board unless it is a well what repercussions board. is there by you if they did if they use the seal anyways 
Um, I mean, it's great, I think, to have, it's great to have something in writing, but I mean, if, if we don't do anything about them using it, who cares? The only way you can legally forbid <clears throat> them from using it is trademark and get it trademarked. That's going to cost you a few hundred dollars. I would suggest for now you make a motion, you take a vote, and you make it clear they're not supposed to do it and hope that organizations that are lobbying for the civic good will not misuse it. Yeah. And it may be a few hundred dollars, but it's good for 75 years, right? Trademark's good for quite a while. Yeah. Did you, have, did you ever encounter this situation? No. We, we've had trouble in other towns with them misusing the seal. With Our seal is really pretty cool. So it's a good it's, seal. Oh, it's the reason. <laughs> well, there was somebody who came, what, about a year ago that we approved? Well, yeah, the beer. For the beer. No, for the there 300. was something else, too. There was somebody else who was making little plaques or something like that. I, I would think you'd be careful to try to restrict it to something closely related to a town purpose sure. rather than a civic. Yeah. Like the 300th. The 300th would be a town the, purpose. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, a perfect I, all example. All I'm saying is there was a precedent where somebody was doing something for their own gain and we said yes. We may have limited it. I don't exactly remember. But that would be, um, you know, making a vote tonight would impact it going forward. Yeah. Taking, taking a vote now would mean this is the policy going forward, and the board could make an exception if someone presented a reasonable case for why allowing them to do it. Say they were doing something at Patakaway and they wanted to, and it was the state, and they wanted to have the Raymond seal and yep. the Nottingham seal. and It, it should be time-bound, though. Yes, it should be. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, is there a vote to restrict the that? use? Oh, I'm sorry. Mayor, point out that the town seal is routinely used by journalists. The forum uses it. I use it. Yeah, but the, but the forum and you are not town organizations, which I believe that we don't want to create the impression that you are an, an arm of the town government. So the seal the seal should be reflecting you, that it's town you, government. Do you genuinely believe that anybody thinks that we're arms of the town government? I. Clearly, the, the company that made those postcards yeah, thought that, that it was because that. of the presence of that seal that it was the town's responsibility. That's who they send the bill to. No, no, but I mean, that's a perfect <laughs> example of somebody making that mistake. You know, and it's a logical mistake to make, right? You see the town seal and you're like, well, it must be, must be town sanctioned. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All right. Do you need a motion? Um, or are you just looking for a consensus? No, I want a motion. All right, I'll make a motion to select board vote to restrict the use of the town seal to town government uh, usage only, including boards, departments, committees, and commissions, and forbid the use by those not a part of municipal government. With the exception of the board's approval. With the exception of the board's approval. Yeah, and you need to be consistent in the exceptions you make. Should we have guidelines set up as to under these criteria that we'll accept it, or I would we could wait until later? somebody makes application to use it and then think through the issue. But for right now, restrict it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Motion made by Tony Dumas, second by Ben Bartlett. Roll call. I Ben Bartlett. I John Morin. I Donna Danis. I Tony Dumas. Um, the. Public Works Department needs a mission statement for an asset management program grant that we have. I'm suggesting, uh, Sean and I are suggesting the following. The mission of the Town of Nottingham is to enhance the quality of life in the Town of Nottingham by providing professional public works services to safely and efficiently manage the town's infrastructure. Is that, is that standard? Is that the type That's, of... The, the engineer who's requiring us to have one suggested it. <laughs> but do other towns have mission yes. statements like this? Yes. Okay. It's, it's quite common for the town to have one and for the major departments to have one. It's a mission statement. I mean, really, uh, I mean, uh, whatever. I know, I know. It's, it's like it's, putting it's fancy fine. something on something that doesn't need to be fancy, but whatever. No, uh, I, I some get very elaborate. I, bet you <laughs> <laughs> I have seen towns hold meetings where they had... A hundred <laughs> residents come and work on a mission statement with stickies and, you know, these boards have written up and what they wanted mentioned. We'll show up some night and bring it yeah. to the board. <laughs> we'll ask to be put on the agenda. Three, three, volume one, volume two, and volume three. Yeah. All right. Do we have a motion? 
I'll make a motion to the select board approve uh, the Department of Public Works uh, mission statement as proposed. I'll second. Motion made by Tony Dumas, second by John Morin. Roll call vote. I've been by Hi, John Morin. Hi, Donna Danis. Hi, Tony Dumas. <clears throat> Um, uh, okay, the next item is we are advertising for vacant positions. Uh, uh, number seven. Oh, seven. Good. Thank you. Um, questions have arisen over who we allow to link to the website. And the be issue becomes a First Amendment issue that if you allow some, you've got to allow others. Um, I suggest a fairly tight hyperlink policy that restricts it. Um, I, I developed uh, such policies in the past I can make a suggestion on what it would look like but it would restrict the town's website so that it's just governmental purposes only and if you wanted Chamber of Commerce type stuff they go through the library or someone who has more flexibility on what they want but the town website and um, the fact that you have a gov website it's supposed to be only limited to the town so uh, do you want us to work at developing a hyperlink policy? What do you think, Alan? Absolutely. Okay. If you do it for one, you must do it for all. So it's, I don't it's think anybody should use it but the town, so my take on it. That's a big yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the pollinator garden. Hey, uh, I keep Marie. skipping the lines. I know. Hey, yeah, I'm okay. trying to hurry through. Sorry. <laughs> Why, you want to go home? <laughs> no. Uh, I like it here. Um, we're advertising for vacant position for an equipment operator for a foreman. We have a job description. I'd like to table this. I think there's some non-public discussion we need to have, and we'll put it on a future agenda regarding the job description. If there's no objection, we'll just move on. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Next item, <laughs> pollinator garden. Um, <clears throat> At Marston, Nathaniel uh, Vicesi Vecchio, I think it's probably pronounced. Lovecchio. Lovecchio, yeah, I, yeah mis I mistyped it, I think. A Nottingham Eagle Scout proposes a final service project to establish a pollinator garden at Marston Farm. Courtney supports it. They want to reestablish milkweed, which is very important for monarch butterflies and other plants to bring back pollinators. The location Courtney coordinated with um, not be in the way of future development. Maintenance will typically be a couple of mowings a year. Um, he also wants to create a few benches, and um, he's agreed to the use of that manufactured wood product that doesn't rot and everything. I um, uh, can't remember what it is, but you can drill it, saw it. Um, composite yeah. wood. Yeah. yeah, composite imitation wood. Uh, does the board approve the project? Sounds oh. fine. I'm not going to say no to the Eagle Scout project. <laughs> Do you need a motion? I, I, I would like one, yes. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, pollinator, pollinator garden. garden at Marston's for the Eagle Scout program. Second. Set. Yeah. Motion, he beat you. Motion made by uh, John Moore and second by Ben Bartlett. Roll we'll call vote. I've been by John Warren. I Donna Danis. I Tony Dumas. Okay, just um, just to update you and the public, it's likely the transfer station will be closed Thursday. Um, I'll have more information in non-public if you want. Um, after the storm, we had three trucks in the repair shops. The 550, we still don't know when we're getting an engine. The 350, again, and one of the newer 10-wheelers had a hydraulic pump that needed replacing. <clears throat> Good thing we hadn't disposed of the old 300 international. That one seems to keep be chugging along. Um, uh, the Bobcat at the transfer station is down again. It needs to be repaired because we need to have it working in order to get trade value when the backhoe comes in. But in the interim, one of our uh, plow contractors has a backhoe that he'll go over there a couple of times a day or whenever and just do it with his machinery, his labor. We felt that was a better option than trying to rent like we did with the backhoe last fall when we thought it would be several months, actually. It was sometime. Town election is 328, and you've already discussed being there. We need engineering on Maston Well. We talked about Tim Witham has resigned as animal control officer. 
I'm appointing Melissa Bacon. The appointment sheet will come to the board uh, when we get. Have you talked to her? I've talked to her. Um, she's open to doing it. Uh, I just, we just need to agree on a rate and okay. settle that out. Um, the copier vendor that we have went to bat for us with the lease company, and the price to buy out the lease on the one in administration dropped from twenty-six eleven to a thousand dollars. We're waiting for that copier shuffle to occur. Uh, DPW posted roads thirteen ton limit uh, that's in effect now. We've had a request from a logging company to upgrade a class six road. Um, Sean. I will be working with them. Uh, the board will have to approve it. You can't improve a Class 6 road without permission from the Board of Selectmen. The logging They'll be improving it at their cost. The, the logging company? The logging company okay. pays to fix it. Right. Ultimately, the owner of the trees that sold pays for it. But yeah, the logging company will fix it up. Um, they obviously want to get tractor trailers in and out so they can chip well, so and here's load. Here's a question for you. Yep. Oh, well and good. Do we hold a retainer of money for them to make sure that they do it? Yeah, we usually have a bond. bond. Well, that's what I'm asking. We have a bond. Yeah. Okay. You just didn't mention it. Oh, yeah. No, that's standard. We get a bond from most logging companies. Just Sorry. Yeah, it's fairly standard practice. Rarely, once in a while, we have one we don't need a bond for. It comes out on a state oh, I road. I know for the planning board, we get bonds for all new construction, new roads that go into the list. But it's not often that we have a an old class five row where somebody's going to go destroy it basically and i wanted to make sure that we had a bond so that if they do destroy it that we can at least have money to refix it well if we had a 175 acre lot on a on a town road gravel road we get a bond so that they guaranteed they fix it at the end and it was kept up to standard we we, we get bonds regularly on roads for logging companies probably the only exception would be someone was coming out directly onto the state highway paved road they just need to bond the entrance, you know, that they, they, they need to put the, the rock to keep mud from getting dragged out onto the road, kind of. Um, transfer station, um, we had a new furnace installed. Uh, the storage tanks need to be protected with bollards. I don't know why those storage tanks are unprotected up there, the, the gas tanks. Mm -hmm. We need to either put uh, Jersey barriers or bollards or something in uh, per uh, the inspection. Um, the um, heating and uh, the HVAC man who does this, Baudet, says we're wasting our money if we don't insulate the building because there's holes in the insulation and in the building and everything else. Uh, that transfer station has a limited life, but I don't see you replacing it in the next year or two, so it's probably worth putting some insulation work in, you know, getting some of it fixed up. Um, uh, to try to reduce the amount of uh, heat loss. Um, any, I will, of money, any of the money that we put in for the uh, was it the uh, building fund or whatever? Could that any of that cover? What? No, that has to be for major systems. Okay. The way it's written, uh, roof, plumbing, heating. I mean, a major plumbing mm -hmm. heating. Um, it doesn't recover what routine maintenance or. Now, if you go through and you do a major project on the building, you could say it's a major system, but if what you're doing is spending a few hundred dollars on insulation and having highway crew tack it up, that's, you're not gonna get reimbursed from, the, from that fund. I will say um, the transfer station is out of date. It uh, needs to be replaced, it needs to be bigger, and you've gotta move it. Tell us something we don't know, John. Right. I know. Go on now, just fix <laughs> Okay. So, um, I, I mean, I know the building assessment committee met again tonight. Mm -hmm. They did a preliminary report that was printed in the in the town report. I'm assuming that when they finalize that and it comes to the board, the, then there's going to have to be decisions about, you know, what's prioritized and what the plan is moving forward. Yeah, the, the CIP has... Oh, what did you say? I went by the town of Lees yesterday or Saturday. Their transfer station, beautiful. So There's, nice and organized, and the buildings where you go. I'm just you want to see Farmington? Right. I agree. There are some, but they had room. The key is room. Yeah. You've got to be able to spread it out. Yeah. Okay. PFAS. Um, 
The attorney is still working on clarifying the uh, request. There's 151 communities at this point that have gotten notice of uh, this, and the attorneys are banding together from these towns. Uh, some firms represent several towns, um, so they are uh, pushing back and will be going to the judge. So I do have non-public items uh, for us to consider, but okay. that's what I had for public. Ben, you wanted time? You asked for time tonight? Yeah, well, well, real quick before I do that, uh, in regards to the uh, 550, I did speak to Sean earlier today, and Ford is about eight months behind. We're four months into it, so he suspects within the next four months we'll have a new motor for that uh, 550 that's sitting at McFarland. Yeah, and, and you could also share that um, there are some options now. We thought we couldn't get a truck like we want, but now there are some in the area. The one, nearest one we could find a month ago was New York State, but there are some local. You saw one. Yeah. Uh, Sean went looked one at Concord today, so. Okay. So, um, Steve Saroff could not be here tonight. However, he would like me to call him, put him on speaker, to address Donna and Tony. So if you don't mind. Okay. And we have some items to present to you. He's not gonna sing to us, is he? God, I hope not. <laughs> or tell us jokes. Don't let him tell us Bring jokes. Yeah. No Good evening, jokes. Steve. Okay, so I'm handing Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that, Steve. Thank you very much. You all, you all set, Steve? Do we get to look in? Oh. That's a hat. It's a hat. It's a Nottingham 300th hat. Yeah. Nice. And it matches my shirt. Yeah, it matches your shirt perfectly. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Steve. You. Thank you, Ben, for. Steve could not be here. He, was not, he wasn't feeling well. So. Thank you for being the master of ceremony. <laughs> Oh, more Aww. gifts. Oh, thank you very much. There's actually one more thing coming from uh, the town that I thought we'd have another meeting, but probably you will get that's it. That's uh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, do we have anything else for public? Assessing. Oh, assessing. How can I forget? We already did town election prep, town seal, website policy. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the timber yield tax for map 75 and 74, lot one for each, map three, lot 12 2, map three, lot 12 1, map 76, lot 2 2 and map 52 lot 4-1 second oh. <laughs> motion made by tony doom is second by ben bartlett roll call hi ben bartlett hi john warren hi donna danis hi tony dumas and i'll also make a motion the select board approve the veterans tax credits for map 70 lot 17 uh, map 10 lot Four slash one dash three, and map fifty two lot ten. Second. Uh, motion made by Tony Dumas, second by Ben Bartlett. Hi Ben Bartlett. Hi John Warren. Adonis Davis. Hi Tony Dumas. Okay, is that it? John. Looks like it. I have nothing else. I in public. Okay. What letter are we under? 
Uh, we'll be going under um, uh, A and C, personnel and reputation. Okay. All right, we will uh, be going into non-public. After we come out of non-public with no further public business, we will be closing the meeting. So thank you for attending and watching. We'll take a motion now. Yep, I'll make a motion the select board under enter non-public session per 90, RSA 91-A colon 3, section 2A and C. Second. Uh, motion made by Tony Dumas, second by Ben Bartlett. Roll call vote. Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, John Warren. Adonna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas.